بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ربی شاہ سطری میسر علی عمری واہل القطہ میں لسانی یفقہ کولی دس از انجینئر سعد سعید اینڈ ٹوڈے آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو گیو یو گیو یو گائڈ لائنس آن ہاؤ ٹو فارم ایٹ یور فائنل ایئر ڈیزائن تھیسز دس لیکچر از فار دا ٹو کے سیونٹین کیمیکل انجینئرنگ اسٹوڈنٹس ناؤ دا فارمر گائڈ لائنس آن ہاؤ ٹو پریپیئر یور فائنل ایئر ڈیزائن تھیسز ہیو بین گیون اینڈ دس از دا پی ڈی ایف ڈاکیومنٹ وچ کنٹینس دا ڈیٹیلس آن فارمیٹنگ and in this lecture i will try to uh, i will try to give you the details on how to implement it so let's start first i will tell you how to how to form the table of contents now there are two ways you can either form it manually or automatically for that you have to go to the ref, uh, reference section references tab on my, uh, in microsoft word and then here on the left hand side you have the table of contents now uh, this is built in this is the automatic style table 1 automatic style table 2 manual table so um, i prefer uh, that sh and the students should use the automatic style because this will make it easier uh, for a large document this is preferable and much easier to handle okay so uh, as it says uh, creating a table of contents start by applying a heading style from the styles gallery to the selected te text so uh, in order to use this uh, uh, the automatic table of contents you should be careful in giving a heading style to each style in your document so let's define the heading number 1 heading number uh, there is no specific guideline on headings heading 1 2 3 etc it's um, they have not been specified so you can choose uh, you can choose uh, whatever font you want or whatever uh, font size you want uh, but since uh, i'm going to use uh, the most common font that is uh, times new roman and in the normal uh, text i will use 12 size font so uh, that's why for heading 1 i will keep um i will keep the size to let's say 14 and it would be bold sized headings normally uh, for the font size it is written that it should be between 14 to 20 so i'm going to keep it 14 here so a uh, heading 1 14 size and times new roman okay now for heading 2 a subheading so i will say 12 bold and times new roman right so this is my heading to ready now uh, so the, this is good enough uh, you can also add heading 3 heading 4 etc now for the normal text should be size 12 times new roman and also uh, here in the format format tab we have a lot of options like font paragraph tabs border etc so um, i will go to paragraph and here alignment that is very important alignment must be justified right alignment must be justified and uh, line spacing uh, i don't think this is specified as well see that no i don't think line spacing is there so i will keep it uh, the 1.5 or 2 right double spacing i think double is better or um, you can also keep it to 1.5 lines 
Okay, so I have defined normal heading one and heading two. With the help of heading one and heading two, um, I will make the table of contents. So let's do it. L uh, let's say uh, my first heading is introduction. And second is literature review. Third is process selection. Uh, okay, we will we will keep it just like in the guidelines. So introduction, process selection, material and energy balance. So introduction, let's uh, skip this and make this material and energy balance. And in uh, introduction, we have several subheadings, preferred subheadings like history, background, f physical and chemical properties of raw materials. So historical background. physical and chemical properties of raw materials and then um, local survey worldwide survey local survey world worldwide survey okay and in process selection we have types of processes, selection of process, process description, so types of process, uh, selection of process, process description, right. So um, introduction and process selection and material energy balance, and th these are the chapter names, let's call them, uh, um, let's call them heading number one and let's call the others heading number two, right. So select this and then press the control button, select this process selection and also this one and then make all of these heading one. Similarly, select these, press the control button and the two of them as well and then select heading two. So heading one and heading two have been selected. Now go to the contents and update table. There you go. So now uh, also they have uh, they have given the appropriate page numbers as well. Now you can do several things uh, with the uh, with this table of contents. If you want the chapter names like introduction, process selection, etc., uh, to be to be in bold, then go here then custom table of contents and then you can you can modify here uh, modify toc1 so you want this to be bold the heading one to be bold right so okay okay and then apply there you go the chapter names are now bold also you can write this as chapter number one and here chapter number two and this will be chapter number three then again if you update the table there you get chapter number one introduction and in a very um, in a very slick way it is showing the chapter numbers and uh, the contents the heading number two 
heading one and heading two are being shown you can also add heading three here but i think it's better to just restrict it to heading one and two and another uh, uh, another advantage of using automatic table of contents is that uh, if you forget a uh, heading in between like uh, let's say uh, in between physical and chemical properties of raw materials and local survey if you have to insert another heading then uh, when you update the table it will uh, also automatically change the page numbers of the entire table so with manual table that that is always a concern you will have to go through each and every uh, page number again and again you will have to make the changes yourself so that will be very difficult also very uh, time consuming so this is i think the best way you can also change it here uh, no, you can you can name it table of contents and then make it and then centralize it right so th this is the best way of making the table of contents now uh, uh this this is the table of contents about the headings what about list of figures and list of tables so right um list of figures and list of tables so uh, again go to the references section and here you can see this table of figures dialog okay so no uh, table of uh, figure entries found now um, we have to insert a table and a figure here so let's insert it insert a table mm let's see this is the table and we have serial number column a column a column b Uh, auto fit you can auto fit to contents as well as windows so let's auto fit to the windows um, now um, I'm not going to fill the contents here so we will just now give it caption so this will also cover one more thing like in the guidelines it is written that every table and figure should have a caption just like this so give it a caption how to do that just uh, click on the table uh, uh, and go to insert caption now this is table one so okay so here we have table one and let's say this is the table one now you can also change uh, the format uh, you don't have to do it manually you can just change like this this caption you can modify it you can change its color to uh, black you don't want it in italic so remove that and you want it in 10 times new roman right so click and you want to centralize it as well this is up to you because this is again um, uh, it's not specified in the guidelines so this is it and uh, this is table one this is the table one and uh, this is your caption and this is the table uh, caption table so okay you want to uh, yeah okay so okay this is this is the table table number one and it is also showing the page number now i want to also insert uh, now you can write here list of tables and you can centralize it so this is a table of contents then the list of tables now uh, list of figures so let's insert a figure here mm.
okay so this is the figure and again insert caption instead of table this is a figure so figure one okay so figure one and uh, this is the figure one and uh, you can centralize this and also this one should be centralized as well okay the, so this is the figure one and here we will insert figures okay so list of figures make it bold and centralize it so now we have the table of contents list of tables list of figures so as you go on you keep on inserting table and it is better to have uh, tables in chapter one to be listed as table 1.1 1.2 1.3 etc then tables in the chapter 2 to be listed as tables 2.1 2.2 2.3 etc similarly for uh, figures in chapter 1 uh, it is better to have them as figure 1.1 1.2 1.3 etc and how to do that right so let's just remove it and then insert caption again now figure one uh, now I want to give it a new label which is figure one point okay so now this is now figure 1.1 1 .1. and if I insert another table that will be figure 1.2 so I have uh, given this a new label similarly for uh, figures in chapter 2 you can do this again give it a new label and uh, name it figure 2 point and then it will uh, number the figures consecutively so okay now it has become figure 1.1 and if you just update this now you have to uh, uh, go here and yes select this one figure 1 point figure 1 point so and then update it and then you have this so um, this was the, about making tables and you have also learned how to caption how to make caption to the tables as well as the figures then uh, another part which uh, which we have to discuss is uh, basic format is a4 paper but if you have to insert a figure or a table um, on a landscape uh, paper size landscape orientation then what you have to do you don't want uh, the whole form uh, whole formatting to change so the easy way is to here uh, go to layout select breaks and then next page right so you can see it here that there's a section break now uh, what, what you can do that, uh, with this section break is that now you can uh, change its layout and it will just apply to this section so I can change its layout to landscape and then here this section only this section okay so this section has this right and then I can come back I can uh, insert my table or figure in the landscape mode here and then it will uh, come back to the A4 size after that So after that I can again go here go to breaks then the next page and I can see here that there's another section break and here I can change the orientation again to portrait for this section right so now um, my document is following the A4 size paper and in between it is landscape where I can insert 
the figure or a table in landscape mode and then it goes back to the a4 size right so this is the way to handle uh, uh, figures or tables in uh, in sizes different from your default size okay now something about uh, the figures that you will uh, first thing uh, uh, another thing you have to you have to make sure is that the tables should not be uh, copy pasted in the form of figures you you have to make your own tables plus the resolution of your figures should be high they should not blur they should not break like for example i have this figure of pulverized coal now if i zoom it look it breaks the reason for that is that it has a low resolution 96 dpi however uh, with this figure you can see that even if I zoom in, it does not break. The reason is that it has a high DPI, 600 DPI. So uh, the, your resolution must be greater than 300 DPI for it to not break. So you have to keep that in mind. You can use software like the, you can. Um, uh, uh, tinker with the settings in the Microsoft PowerPoint to make that happen as well and you can also use other softwares like uh, eDraw or Origin etc but your figures uh, and and if you're importing the figures from Google uh, sharing uh, searching the figures from Google images then you must see that uh, um, uh, the images are of large size now um, let's focus on the citations and the references very very important part this one now in the guidelines it says that the references should be given in IEEE format okay so uh, let's say I write something like uh, like uh, water scarcity is becoming a huge problem Now, uh, in I, uh, I, uh, in I style, I have to give the citation as well as the reference. So, um, uh, th the best way I would suggest is to use a software like a Mendeley software. There's also EndNote, which many researchers use, but it costs. So, uh, you can either have it uh, in the crack form, or I think it's better to have Mendeley desktop because it is free and it is easier to use so i already have this mm, i have the um, ms word plugin of mendeley desktop here but for you um, if you don't have it first go go to google and search for mendeley desktop download it install it and then when you open it this is how it will look right so now uh, what you have to do is just search for it like uh, Coulson Richardson book chemical engineering Coulson Richardson now these are the different books uh, Coulson Richardson's chemical engineering uh, books volume 2 etc so let's let's say i have to give a citation of this coulson richardson chemical engineering volume 2 particle technology and separation processes i will select this i will save the reference and then i will go to recently added this is the book 
I am not concerned with the volume issue or pages. So now what I will do here, uh, I have taken this, uh, let's say I have taken this sentence from the book. I have to, uh, I want to give citation of the uh, chemical engineering volume 2 book. So insert citation, write chemical engineering. Coulson, Richardson, this is it, okay, okay, so this is the citation, this is done, one, but the complete references at the end of your thesis for that, Now this this will happen at the end. I will just write references as a heading, and then below that I will use this insert bibliography. Okay, so this is it. Insert bibliography, and I have the whole book, the authors, the uh, book title, the year everything that is needed so with um, again uh, what uh, makes it easy for us using Mendeley is that uh, if if I have to give another let's say citation before this today we will talk about water problems and Let's say it comes from this research paper. So uh, automatically it puts this reference before the one uh, uh, of the book by uh, Richardson, Harker, etc. So um, this is the best way to handle your citations and references. So this is uh, this is it. I think if if you follow uh, these guidelines, and if you follow the, uh, the table of contents, if you make the table of contents automatically, and if you use Mendeley Desktop to uh, to do your citations and references, and you give captions, then it will make your task easy because uh, your finally design project will be a very large document and you will not have to worry about these things uh, at the end when you have to make several changes during several reviews so thank you very much